Welcome to the Lennox Guy Guru, and now your host, Jay Benjamin. Hi, my name is Jay Benjamin. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Lennox Guy Guru. Our topic for today's program is multimedia application tools. In this broadcast, you'll learn how to create your own CDs, rip audio CDs, burn music to CDs, and you'll be able to manage your media library. You'll also learn how Ubuntu handles graphics, photos, digital cameras, and a whole lot more. I'll begin our program by discussing burning CDs and DVDs in Ubuntu. Linux is generally distributed via the internet as disk images called ISOs or ISOs that are ready to be written to CD or DVDs. Therefore, learning how to burn disks is essential if you have to download and install a Linux distribution. You can use CDs and DVDs to do the following. Record and store multimedia data such as backup files, graphic images, and music. You can also rip audio tracks from music CDs, and ripping refers to extracting music tracks from a music CD, and compile your own music CDs for your own personal use. And although USB storage devices such as thumb drives are making CDs and DVDs almost as rare as floppy disks, they aren't quite gone, and many people still find them useful. As long as that remains true, we want to make sure that this information is available. Creating CDs and DVDs with Brazero. Although adequate for quick burns and use in shell scripting, the command line technique for burning CDs and DVDs is an awkward choice for many people, but we still cover doing so in this program because others find it useful and desirable. Fortunately, Ubuntu provides several graphical clients the most useful tools in Brazero. Brazero is an easy-to-use graphical CD and DVD burning application that is installed by default on Ubuntu. Brazero takes a project-based approach to disk burning, opening up with a wizard from which you can select from four different tasks that people commonly want to do. Brazero also remembers previous projects, enabling you to quickly create several copies of a disk, which is ideal if you're planning to pass on your copies of Ubuntu to your friends and family. Burning a data CD or a DVD is as easy as selecting the option in the opening screen and dragging and dropping the files you want to include from the directory tree on the left to the drop area on the right. If you insert a blank CD or DVD in your writer, Brazero keeps an eye on the disk size and tells you when you reach or exceed the limits. Brazero also creates ISO files, which are disk images that contain everything that would exist on the medium if you burned a real CD or DVD in one file that can be mounted by computer file systems, which is useful if you want to create multiple copies of the same disk, or if you want to share a disk image, perhaps using a USB thumb drive, or over the internet. Finally, click the burn button, input a label for the disk, and Brazero starts creating your new CD or DVD or image file. How long it takes to create a CD or DVD depends on the amount of data you're writing and the speed of your drive. And for the advanced users, you can create CDs from the command line. In Linux, creating a CD at the command line is a two-step process. You first create the ISO 9660-formatted image, and you then burn or write the image onto the CD. The ISO 9660 is the default file system for CD-ROMs. The current capacity for CD media is 700 megabytes of data, or 80 minutes of music. And sound formats exist for storing the sound recordings. Some of these formats I've covered earlier, RAW, MP3, WAV, AUG, Vorbis, or FLAC, just to name a few. For an introduction to more audio formats, check out the list of audio files format at www.fileinfo.com forward slash file types forward slash audio, and it has links to detailed information. And for advanced users, you can create DVDs from the command line using DVD plus R, DVD 
minus R, DVD plus RW, and DVD minus RW. Just to note here, differences in the plus and minus formats have mostly to do with how the data is modulated onto the DVD itself. With the plus format, having an edge and buffer underrun recovery. How this is achieved affects the playability of the newly created DVD or any DVD player. The DVD plus format also has some advantages in recording on scratched or dirty media. Mostly drives support the DVD plus format. As with any technology, your mileage may vary. In this program, I'll be focusing on DVD plus RW drives because most drives support that standard. The software supplied with Ubuntu has support for writing to DVD hyphen R forward slash W rewritable media as well. It will be useful for you to review the DVD plus RW forward slash plus R forward slash hyphen R forward slash W for Linux how to at HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash FY dot CHALMERS dot SE forward slash hyphen APPRO forward slash LINUX forward slash DVD plus RW forward slash before you attempt to use the DVD plus RW hyphen tools, which you need to install to enable DVD creation also known as mastering, and the CDR tools package. You can ignore this discussion in the how-to about kernel patches and compiling the tools. As a note here, the 4.7 gigabyte size of DVD media is measured as 1,000 megabytes per gigabyte instead of the more traditionally used, but not entirely accurate, 1,024 megabytes per gigabyte, more appropriately written gig. So do not be surprised when the actual formatting capacity about 4.4 gigabyte is less than you anticipated. It is my recommendation when burning discs that you have a few extra discs around handy in case you make a mistake. Our next topic of discussion is using Shotwell as your photo manager. Ubuntu comes by default with a pretty good photo manager called Shotwell Photo Manager that you can include simple adjustment tools. You can import your photos into Shotwell, assign tags to them, sort and arrange them, and even upload them to your favorite internet photo hosting sites such as Facebook, Flickr, and Picasa. Over a short period of time, digital cameras and digital imagery have become extremely popular. So popular that some traditional film camera manufacturers are switching solely to digital. This meteoric rise has led to an increase in the number of applications that can handle digital imagery. Linux, thanks to its rapid pace of development, is now highly regarded as a multimedia platform for editing digital images. Another good image editor is Shutter. Besides capturing the full screen, Shutter can capture a specific area or a window. You can also upload to a hosting service. And that can be found at shutter-project.org. One of the best graphic clients available is GIMP. GIMP is a free GPL licensed image editor with sophisticated capabilities that can support and export more than 30 different graphic formats including files created with Adobe Photoshop. One of the best GNU image manipulation programs available in Linux is GIMP. GIMP is a free GPL licensed image editor with sophisticated capabilities that can import and export more than 30 different graphic formats, including files created with Adobe Photoshop. It is often compared with Photoshop, and GIMP represents one of the first significant successes of GNU projects. Many images in Linux were prepared with GIMP. GIMP is not installed by default, but after you install it from the repositories, you can find it by searching the dash for GIMP in the menu and applications, graphics, GIMP image editor. Upon installing GIMP, you'll see an installation dialog box when it's started for the first time, and then a series of dialog boxes that display information regarding to the creation and content of a local GIMP directory. This directory can contain personal settings, preferences, external application resource files, temporary files, and symbolic links to external software tools used by the editor. So what does Photoshop have that GIMP does not? 
Although GIMP is powerful, it does lack two features Adobe Photoshop offers that are important to some graphics professionals. The first of these is the capability to generate color separations for commercial press printers, CMYK, for the color cyan, magenta, yellow, and key or black. GIMP uses RGB, red, green, and blue, which is great for video display, but not so great for printing presses. The second feature GIMP lacks is the use of Pantone colors, a patent and color specification to ensure accurate color matching. These deficiencies might not last long. A CMYK plugin is in the works, and an early version is available from HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash CUE dot Y-E-L-L-O-W M-A-G-I-C dot I-N-F-O forward slash softwares forward slash separate hyphen plus forward slash index dot HTML. And the Pantone issues are likely to be addressed in the near future as well. If these features are unimportant to you, GIMP is an excellent tool. If you must use Adobe Photoshop, you may want to explore using Wine or Code Weavers. There have been consistent reports of success running Photoshop on Linux with these tools. Bear in mind, though, that both Ubuntu and Photoshop release regularly. So check www.winehq.org and codeweavers.com for the current info when assuming it will work. After the initial configuration has finished, GIMP's main windows and toolboxes appear. You'll see GIMP's main window. It'll contain tools used for selecting, drawing, moving, viewing, enlarging or reducing, airbrushing, painting, smudging, copying, filling, and selecting color. You can right-click an image window to access GIMP's cascading menus. You can also install Blender from the repositories menu. With Blender, you can do animations, create 3D printing models, visual effects, art, interactive 3D applications, and video games. The app provides a wide range of features that can be used to create 3D animation films. It's a one-stop 3D package and includes a gaming engine, a video sequence editor, production-ready camera, and object tracking, a large library of extensions, and an advanced physics engine. It can render fully dynamic and simulate the movements of elastic objects and clothes. And that could be found at blender.org, B-L-E-N-D-E-R.org. And another interesting tool is called Inkscape. It has pro-quality, advanced vector and graphic editing features and is popular for drawing vector art, line art, and designing logos and graphics. It's brimming with features such as markers, clones, alpha blending, and more, and is often compared to expensive proprietary apps such as Illustrator and Corel Draw. That can be found at Inkscape.org. I'd like to turn my attention on scanners. You can also use scanners in Ubuntu. With the rise of digital photography, there has been an equal decline in the need for image scanners. However, there are still times that you might need to use a scanner, and Ubuntu makes it easy with a program installed by default called Simple Scan. Simple Scan is designed to do one thing, scan photos or documents easily. It has few settings or options, but does all the things most people would want it to do. I'd like to add a note here, when working with graphics formats, the image file formats are developed to serve a specific technical purpose, lossless compression for example, where the file size is reduced without sacrificing image quality, or to meet a need for a proprietary format for competitive reasons. Many file formats are covered by one or more patents. For example, the GIF format has fallen into disfavor with the open source crowd because the patent holder waited a while before deciding to enforce his patent rights rather than being upfront with requests for patent royalties. Therefore, if you want to view or manipulate an image, you need to identify the file format to choose the proper tool for working with the image. The file's extension in your first indicator is the file format. The graphic image format supported by the applications included with Ubuntu will include the following. BMP, bitmap graphics commonly used in Microsoft Windows, GIF, CompuServe graphics, interchange format, 
JPEG, JPG, Joint Photographic Experts Group, PCX, IBM Paintbrush, PNG, Portable Network Graphics, SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, and TIF, Tagged Image File Format. And a tip I'll leave here is that Ubuntu includes dozens of graphics conversion programs in its software repositories that are accessible through the command line and from the graphical user interface or GUI. And there are just a few that I'll mention here, but if any graphic file formats that can't be manipulated when using Linux, these programs can be called up in Perl scripts, shell scripts, or command line pipes to support many types of complex format conversion and image manipulation tasks. You can also see the man pages for the PPM, PBM, PNM, and PGM families of commands. Also see the man pages for the convert command, which part of a suite of extremely capable programs included with the magic image suite or the image magic suite. And you can even use image capturing screens. You can use graphic manipulation tools to capture images that are displayed on your computer. And these programs are referred to as a screen grab or a screen capture or a screenshot. And all of these programs I mentioned also have the ability for a screen capture with video. So you can also capture the video of the screen as well. Some great programs available all in Linux. And then there's also digital cameras for Ubuntu. Most digital cameras used with Ubuntu fall into one or two categories. Webcams, small, low resolution cameras connected to the computer's interface, or handheld digital cameras that record image data on disks or memory cards for downloading and viewing on a PC. Ubuntu supports both types. Other types of cameras, such as surveillance cameras that connect directly to a network via wired or wireless communications need no special support other than a network connection and viewing software to be used with a Linux computer. Ubuntu supports hundreds of different digital cameras from early parallel port CPIA chipset based cameras to today's USB based cameras. You can even use Intel's QX3 USB microscope with Ubuntu. And because of the good development carried out in the Linux world, you can plug almost any digital camera into your computer through a USB interface, and Ubuntu automatically recognizes the camera as a USB mass storage device. You can even set Ubuntu to recognize when a camera is plugged in so that it automatically imports your photographs. How cool is that? and video formats. Ubuntu recognizes a variety of video formats. The formats created by the MPEG group, Apple, and Microsoft dominate, however. At the heart of video formats are the codecs, the encoders and decoders of the video and audio information. These codecs are typically proprietary, but free codecs do exist. Here is a list of the most common video formats and their associated file extensions, although many more exist. Viewing video in Linux. Out of the box, Ubuntu does not support any of the proprietary video codecs due to licensing restrictions. However, this functionality can be acquired if you install the Ubuntu-Restricted-Extras package from the Ubuntu software repositories. You can learn more about this at https semicolon forward slash forward slash help dot ubuntu dot com forward slash community forward slash restricted formats. You can watch video files and video DVDs with Totem Movie Player, which is installed by default. This may be used with several other file formats and is good for both video and audio and is especially well suited for almost anything you're likely to want to use. Totem Movie Player works with most common video and audio formats. The Adobe Flash plugin is for the Firefox browser and it's a commercial multimedia application that isn't provided with Ubuntu out of the box, but many people find it useful. Adobe Flash enables you to view Flash content at websites that support it. The easiest way of getting the Flash content is to install the Ubuntu-Restricted-Extras package. After you've done this, any Flash animations play quite happily with any Firefox-based browsers. Note that Adobe recently announced they are discontinuing support for Flash on browsers. 
However, the Google Chrome browser supports Flash and Google has committed to making sure it works on Linux. So if Flash is vital to you, using Google Chrome might be your best option. Another interesting video viewer application is VLC. This is one that I strongly recommend and one that I use primarily as my video viewer. And it's available in the software repositories and also for other operating systems like Windows and Mac OS X. VLC uses its own set of audio and video codecs and supports a wider range of video formats than any other media player that I have encountered. So if VLC can't play it, it probably can't be played. And as I discussed in the last episode, the best personal video recorder is Kodi Media Center by far. It would be the best reason to attach a television antenna to your computer. However, it is to use the video card in the computer as a personal video recorder. Using Kodi, you can turn your computer into a personal digital video recorder and it's a Linux-based digital video recorder software project makes it even easier for Ubuntu users. So everything you need is available in the Ubuntu repositories and may be installed and configured easily thanks to the people involved in these projects. And lastly, video editing. You can create and edit video in Ubuntu using a number of different applications. One that I strongly recommend is OpenShot. OpenShot video editor can be found at http semicolon forward slash forward slash www.openshot.org or you can look for it in the Ubuntu repositories. For the more advanced video editors out there, there is Kden Live and it comes from the KDE folks and can be found at http semicolon forward slash forward slash kden L-I-V-E dot org. One of the nicest things that I found about using Linux products and software is that the tutorials and the help menu give you all the information you'll need to learn every application with grace and ease. You'll find more there than you can imagine. And when in doubt, use Google, type in a specific question, and a list will appear with number of possibilities for you to find answers. And believe it or not, there are many tutorials appearing on YouTube about Linux. So just type in your wish list and answers will appear right before your eyes. So learning Linux is a lot easier than you could have ever imagined. You will not find half the information about Microsoft or Apple on the internet or by doing Google searches, but you will find it about Linux because Linux is a free open source software that is willing to help teach you the best operating system by far that has ever been created. Well, that's our show for today. Our next topic of discussion is games. Everybody likes to play games on the computer, so playing games is going to be a a fun part of the next episode for some of you out there. And for you gamers, a small number of games come installed by default with standard desktop Ubuntu. Mostly simple things to divert your attention for a few minutes between tasks. Games such as Solitaire or Sokoku or even Chess. In closing, if you've enjoyed listening to this program, please tell a friend. Knowledge is power. And I encourage everyone listening to this program to learn Linux. It is my hope that the world becomes more informed about Linux and free open source software. If you'd like to contact the show, you can email us at linuxguyguru at gmail.com. You can also check out our website at linuxguy.guru. We have videos there that you can watch. And should you be in the New York area, and you'd like to convert your older Microsoft Windows or Apple computer into a variety of Linux-based operating systems, the possibilities are endless. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Till next time, your host, Jay Benjamin, logging out. Thank you.